Hi there everyone, it's meteorologist Terry Swales. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon. You're on tswales.com and this is your weather briefing for the upcoming weekend. And who is that? That is the heat miser. And you don't recognize him because he hasn't been around this summer. We have not had a single 90 degree temperature and the old heat miser is in the doghouse, not doing his job this year. But I think he is going to pay us a little bit of a visit early next week, maybe for a couple of days there. Temperature should reach the upper 80s to around 90 degrees. If we do get to 90, that would be the first time this year we've accomplished that little trick. And normally we see at least 20 days where temperatures get to 90. So again, the heat miser just hasn't been keeping up with business around here. But we're going to get a little taste of him next week. So far though, look at the July temperatures running way below normal across the central United States, five, six degrees below what is typical. That's going to save us a little bit of money this year, I promise you that much. The, the cooling bills are going to be substantially lower than what they would typically be in an average summer. And once again, let's talk about some low temperatures. This is the third consecutive morning in the Quad Cities that we have either tied or broken a record low. We had record lows the previous two days, and this morning our 54-degree reading tied the record low for the day, which means we continue on with this cool weather. But as I alluded to, there are some changes beginning to take place now that will bring some warmer and more humid weather to the Midwest, and we'll start you with our satellite imagery. The big high pressure that's brought the record cool temps has now started to move off to the southeast, and you can see some clouds beginning to return to the Dakotas and Nebraska there. That's a moisture return on southerly winds. And out that way, there'll eventually be some thunderstorms. And that's the first signs of some humidity returning to the Plain States. Now, this is going to be a slow process, but eventually we'll get some muggy or air in here towards the end of the weekend. And by then, the temperatures will also start to climb. And we'll get back to where we should be temperature-wise at this time of year. And here's what's going to happen to bring the warmth on in here. This is our storm track, and we're starting to see a ridge develop out there in the central and southern Rockies. And around that, the jet stream for a few days next week will come in from the southwest, which will allow some warmer air to get back up here. And so steadily, we will see temperatures climbing by 2 or 3 degrees per day right on into early next week. And in fact... Here is the temperature anomaly for July 22nd, so we're getting out here around Monday and Tuesday, and, and there you can see we're finally getting some above normal readings over much of the central Midwest. And by this time, I'm thinking that there's a pretty good chance highs will be up around 88 to 90 degrees. In fact, what I'm showing you here is the seven-day forecast off the GFS for high temps, and you can see by Monday it is showing 88, and eventually on Tuesday, it has 90 degrees. And just about the time you think summer is back in here, well, look what happens on our jet stream on July 25th. Another vigorous disturbance is moving through southern Canada, and as that works its way southeast, it's going to buckle the jet stream. And once again, look what happens here by the time we get to July 29th. A big trough over the eastern United States, strong northwest flow develops once again, and that allows the cool air to come gushing right back into the country. And here is the temperature anomalies for July 29th. And once again, all through the central and eastern parts of the nation, temperature is going to be running anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees below what's expected at this time of year. So what I'm saying here is that while we will be seeing some warmth here in the next few days, it is not going to lock in and we'll go right back to that cool pattern and drop the humidities again by the time we get to the latter portions of August. As far as rain goes this weekend, don't see too much of that. This is the 72-hour rainfall forecast, and while there may be a few light showers developing as we get deeper into the weekend, the primary action does not come until next week when we get that trough to move into the Midwest. And on the nose of that heat there, there's also likely going to be a few thunderstorms too. So when you add it all up over the next eight days, uh, there are going to be some scattered heavier rains across the upper Midwest and right back down into Iowa, maybe northeastern Missouri and western Illinois. A little difficult to pinpoint all of that, but I do think the weather pattern will turn much more active as we get some better forcing, better moisture, and heat back into the Midwest and finally a front to come across that around Tuesday or Wednesday. But overall, I think you're going to like the weekend forecast around here, continuing on with the pleasant weather conditions, so that is certainly some good news. You have a good one out there. Thanks for visiting tswales.com. And as always, 
Roll weather.